Well, hi again, everybody. I guess you could say it's money time now with two games left in the uh, regular season. The Robert E. Lee Red Raiders very much in the playoff race, but they have also a very tough challenge on Friday night, homecoming at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium, and the undefeated Rockwall Yellow Jackets come into town. Coach Darrell Piskey is with us. Did you pick the homecoming game this year? No, I didn't, uh, <laughs> but it's going to work out all right. I mean, it would be a good game against a great opponent, so it would be something good for the alumni to see. And they're very good. Yeah, they are. They're, they've got it all. they got the whole package, special teams, offense, defense, so they're well-rounded. Uh, we'll talk more about those guys in a moment, but uh, they do have two young men who've been highly recruited this year. Uh, Chris Warren, their running back, and Xavier Castile, a wide receiver slash – Slot slash quarterback slash whatever <laughs> running back. They get it to him in a lot of ways. Those guys are both – talk to me about those kids. Well, they're just special. I mean, really, you know, uh, Chris has got the, the pedigree with his dad and stuff, and he looks a lot like him. You know, I'm old enough to have watched his dad play for Seattle, and he runs the ball like him. He's big, strong, physical, and really fast. Uh, you know, but the Castile kid is just a great athlete. Uh, I think his, the big-time schools aren't on him because it's 5'10 height, but – they got him listed, I think, five, ten and a half. But, boy, he's an athlete. He can hurt you. He's strong. I watched him as stiff arm a kid the other night against Rowlett, just kind of throw him out of the way and continue his path towards the end zone. So it's going to take a valiant effort, you know, by our defense. But still, you can win this game if you do what you need to do. Yeah, it's going to take a perfect game, but, heck, you know, we're due one. And, uh, <laughs> you, know, it's, uh, you know, it's about time we put it all together. We've had games where we've looked really good offensively and some games where we looked really good defensively, some games where we – minimized our penalties. I think we had four against Lakeview, maybe two. So it's going to take one of those nights in all phases. Looking for that. You've had some good wins, but uh, this would be a signature type win. But well, it'd be, it, just, it, it would give us a really good shot at making the playoffs. Mm -hmm. you know, we wouldn't have to rely on somebody else. Then it would still be in our hands. we go beat Naaman there at the end, and we're in. And uh, you know, that's the good part about this one. It's against a great opponent. But we've played some good opponents, you know, with uh, JT and Saxe and those guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just going to take one of those great efforts, which is, you know, exciting for the kids this late in the year, and they got to play a great football game. Before we look at the video of the North Garland game, eight day, uh, last week you beat North Garland 42-7. to seven. Um, That's a good score, but it was not a perfect game, was it? No, uh, we jumped off, you know, and got those first three scores early, and then I felt like we lost our intensity, lost our focus, and just kind of slopped our way through it. Uh, you know, Zach missed some deep balls and stuff like that. But, you know, like you and I were talking earlier, uh, our expectations of Zach's gone up a lot. Yeah. And uh, so he, you know, he. And that's good. It's that. a different, whole different level you're playing that's at right, now, right? That's right. And he just got to continue to take in. He's going to have a tremendous game this week, making good decisions and getting the ball to the open guys and doing all that. Now, I will see the video in a moment, but the first three drives were almost picture perfect. Well, it's pretty much how we worked on it all week, yeah. you know, and then, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like I say, then after that third drive, we kind of got sloppy, uh, let them, ended up letting them go down and, and score on us, uh, you know, which was not that exciting for our defensive coaches because, you know, their goal was to shut them out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but offensively, that's where we, we were upset because we should have been scoring every possession. We kind of let them dictate some things that t typically we need to dictate. Uh, defensively, uh, they gave up that one touchdown, but overall, was that more like it for your defense? Yeah, uh, you know, their quarterback threw some balls that were, you know, pretty much uh, off target and, you know, kind of caused our DBs to lose the ball. You know, they'd play the receiver and turn to find the ball, and, you know, the ball was, in, you know, pretty poorly thrown, and mm -hmm. their guy would react to it and go make the catch. So <laughs> it helps us to learn we got to keep our, you know, keep our contact with our receiver at all times. But, no, we did much better defensively. Uh, you know, like I say, they, they broke that one run, uh, quarterback pulled it and kept it, you know, pretty good little athlete. Uh, outside of that, we fit better. Uh, you know, linebackers fit better yeah, as against Garland where we didn't sit off the edge. We sit off the edge a little better except for that one play this week. Well, the uh, Red Raiders again won 42-7, to so uh, let's take a look at the uh, happy results of the game against North Garland. It was played on a Thursday night. Uh, and by the way, the last game of the regular season will also be a Thursday night game at Williams Stadium. You're on offense here to start yeah, off. Yeah, this is the first drive here. Zach gets pull read and Barker finds a crease in there. and. Works it out pretty well. Could have thrown to either one looking at the replay. The corner follows Barker in, so the bubble was wide open also. He gets that choice, whichever one he feels like has the most grass. 
it would go again. It's the first drive of the game, and a lot of things went right. What do this, you call that? Now, this is Mason Parker, right? No, that's uh, Trevor Carr no, right Trevor there. Carr, right. Okay. The, the out there. But that's just our zone read, and then after you read it, you know, and you get a pull read, you got a run option or you got a throw option. Depending but to on be what able to throw on the run like that, that's easier said than done, right? Yeah, and he didn't early in the game. Uh, you know, we're frustrated because he didn't forward, he didn't press them much. You know, with the <clears> run <throat> part of it, he immediately when he pulled it was looking to throw. Uh, whereas we want him to put that outside guy in a, see right there, put that outside guy in a little bit of a bind with his run. Right. Senior Trevor Carr with the uh, bubble screen. Yep. Trevor's had a good year for he you. He has. He's, He's done, done a good, a good job. job. As it has a lot of the seniors. That's the same play there. Again, Zach just – and that could have been play action. Looking at his – it didn't look like he uh, read it to run. So here you are. You're at their 16-yard line, first drive of the game. You know, uh, Devers did a good job working to keep keep working to find that void. They covered the bubble there with that guy, and Devers got to work, get open. That was a play action, wasn't a true zone read there. And you're close to the goal line. This is going to be Mason Parker yeah. scoring. Through the bubble, Mason did a good job getting in the end zone. Mason has a, a touchdown on the ground and his first touchdown catch as a high school yeah. football player. Big thrill for him. He's come along nicely for you, too. Yeah, he's a pretty good little athlete, you know, and he's tough and not scared of contact. And really, he's harder to bring down. You look at him and you think he'd be pretty easy to tackle, but he's pretty tough to bring down. He's, he's, he's kind of got a knack for it. Fearless, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he'll catch the ball in traffic. So you're up six, uh, up seven to nothing at that point. Got a defensive highlight here. Again, you know, it's important, I guess, when you're a big favorite, jump on a team early and don't give them any hope, right? Yeah, uh, we kind of gave them some hope, you know, when we got sloppy after that. Really, you just got to learn. And that's these guys, you know, growing up and learning. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since they've been able just to bury somebody. So, you know, they got to get that killer instinct and learn that you just bury them early. And when the coach says pull off, then you pull off. Yeah, we talked about that. You know, these young men have... You know, they, they're just, they, you have a big lead, you got to learn how to handle that. Yeah. They play from behind all yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. That's Playing right. from ahead is a different deal, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Got to keep your intensity. Be nice to play from ahead, though, a lot. Yes. Yeah, that's, it'd be great this nice. week. This is uh, just a wide angle of that same play. Dermon does a good job fitting. He didn't square up, kind of hit the guy off the edge, but he would fit in the right spot. Brandon Dermott is verbally committed to Louisiana Tech, so he'll yeah. get an opportunity to play football next year. Good yep. for him. Going to be kind of graduating, get there in the spring, give him a chance to compete for some playing time next year. Yeah, he'll graduate in December, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Go on down to Ruston, Louisiana. He wears number 33. Now, he's a middle backer. The might backer on the line of scrimmage, the base of the screen is uh, Gray Calhoun. Yep, Calhoun just junior. Uh, he's not in on that particular play, but to uh, give you some idea of some of the guys you're looking at. You started uh, Raglan at defensive end on Friday Yeah, you know, too, Raglan's just done a good job. Uh, you know, those defensive ends have been running upfield a little bit. And, you know, when you get a puller, they're not blowing up the right leg of the puller. And so Raglan, you know, has earned his way to get in there and start. It's, it's just, Nathan Raglan, yeah, right? Yeah, just get in there and he'll do exactly what you tell him to do, how you want him to do it. And... Fumble recovery there. I think yeah, that um, was a uh, Campbell Miller who got that fumble. Recovered yeah. that fumble. Uh, I think it was Udo that caused it. Thinking back to our awards this weekend, him or uh, Wheeler. But Miller got on it and led to another another score. Now you're back on offense. Tavon made some good cuts there and got us some positive yards. Didn't quite get to 100 yards, but had a real, really, really nice game for you. Yeah, when you roll those two, you know, when he has a 100-yard night, it's a really good night with two of them rolling in there and limiting his touches. Yeah, the, the tailback position this year has produced right at 1,000 yards yeah, for you. Yeah, that's right. So it's not one guy, it's two, Devontae Craver being the other one. Yeah. There's that pass. Good on. news is they're both juniors, so... Here's Ajuan Barker. Same play, Ajuan just getting in the void. You know, it pretty kind of puts them in a bind, especially if Zach will force that edge on the run. 
There's a bad snap here, and Zach's able to get it and still find. This a remarkable deals. play, all things considered. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, it was went from bad to good in a in a hurry. And who did the best job? I mean, look, Jordan Devers didn't give up on the play. No, he kept he working. Open. He kept working, and Zach was able to get a handle on it and then have the presence of mind to throw it downfield there. Luckily, we didn't have a lineman downfield. And the touchdown from Zach. O line did a good job. Got a good push there. Look at the left side, just kind of cave them all down. Weeks, I believe, ends up with a pancake. Weeks' knees are... Yeah, he's doing good, doing holding good. up good. He missed three games early in the season. Matthew Weeks, the uh, senior tackle. You need him in there. With him in there, that's a good offensive yeah, line. Yeah, makes him, you know, got to add a little size to it. Guys yeah, doing a good job. Secondary on the feeling time. good, old Wheeler and Udo. I think Teddy gets pinned inside here, if I remember correctly. Outside guy pinned him inside, so the safety's got to make him right. Safety's always the guy that makes the fit right. You know, if he's got to go inside, he goes in. He's got to go out, he go out, depending on what the guy in front of him does. Guys doing Maybe a job Dermon there. And Looks like Calhoun and a couple other guys. Miller and Calhoun back. all fitting right, three <clears throat> linebackers. They're going to need to really tackle well Friday night, those guys. That'll are. be the key to that game, won't it? Yeah, it is. Got to tackle. Got to tackle. I mean, they're going to get some yardage. They're, they're good enough. Some, they're going to get some right. yardage. Right? And then their scheme's tough on you and what they do. And so when you get the opportunity, you got to tackle them, which is going to be a great challenge. Going back across here, Good Wheeler coverage. should have picked that. Is that Jonathan Wheeler? Mm -hmm. He's done a really nice job. Yeah, he has. This year. He didn't start out as a, so a starter this year. No, he, he was on the offensive side. You know, mm -hmm. playing that inside receiver, and then Mason and Tyreek were doing so well that you know moved him over the defense, and just kind of kid he is. He's a senior. Yep. You can tell you're up two touchdowns, and this is your third. Yeah, third drive back on offense. All three of these in the first quarter, all within about the first five or six minutes of the game, Just too. Just a little hitch. Really, they sent a corner stunt right there, and Zach and Jordan did a good job of seeing it coming and just threw the hitch right out there, and Jordan made something happen with it. They didn't blitz the corner anymore. <laughs> so here's the wide-angle view of that. Typically, they do it from the boundary. They did it from the wide side that time, which really puts their defense in a bind. You got so much field to work with over there. And knocking at the door again here, inside the 10 yard line. O'Lyma do a good job of washing that down. Really, that was zone left. But they got a good wall, and that's you know that's what Coach Quinlan and Denson them work with those guys. If they'll just build a wall somewhere, our backs and quarterbacks good enough to find that crease and pick up positive yardage. Zach had three touchdown passes and three touchdown runs the other night, but still, that still wasn't his best game. He could play no, a lot that's better. Right. Can't that's right. He he didn't throw the deep ball very well till that last one, you know, and. Uh, you know, that's why we threw it, just trying to get him one more chance to connect on that deep ball, because he's thrown deep ball pretty good all year. It says something about how talented he is, though. When yeah, that's right, when he have a bad night and still do that and kind of stuff. And count for six touchdowns, yeah. yeah. Good effort here defensively. Guys kind of stacking them up. Defensive line played a pretty good game. Linebackers fit pretty well. You're using uh, three different kids now at nose tackle too, right? Yeah, now, aren't you? Yeah, they're mixing Taylor in and Traveris Watson and Samples, and then uh, you know they're rolling quite a few of them. We're all seeing those guys out there with Raglan, Gaines, uh, Coke Casey, and all Harrelson. All those guys. Bradley rolling. plays. Jeff Bradley's rolling in out there. So there's quite a few rolling in, which is good. It means you always got fresh legs. Tavon making a good cut.
wide angle. I think you see the tackle wall his guy out and gives him a chance to cut up inside there. And he is a determined, no nonsense. Yeah, kind he's of a good. I tell you player, what, I like. He? I'm glad he's on our team. Yeah, but I mean, his blocking—that's the thing. The other oh, yeah. part of it. He's such a good blocker yeah, too. He's not whatever you need him to do. He'll do it. I mean, with he, a smile on his face. Yeah. I guess that's why they call him smiling. Yeah. Is that why they call him smiling? I guess he's I guess. always smiling. In I a asked good him that last year. He told me, and I can't remember what the. I guess most of his life, that's what what they've called him. Yeah, there's Got defense it. all fitting well right there. No, Tavon's a great kid. Well, you talk about defensive responsibilities. Uh, uh, it's not always about just running, everybody running to the ball. No, guys you got have right areas, places right? to fit. That's right. That's right. You see guys sometimes aren't on the tackle, but they actually they made the tackle because they fit and cut the guy in or set the edge. Kind of like cogs in a wheel. I mean, they've yeah. got to, if it all meshes together, the thing works pretty good. Yeah, right? that's right. And when they don't, it, it's, it's not very good. It leaves openings, yeah. right? It, you get gashed, yeah. right? That's a good job right there. Outside backer, I think. Yep, little coach boy fitting off the edge. Was that him? Oh boy. You know, you just nudged me and told me it was him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from this angle, I can't tell whether he's in there. For those of you not, my son plays on the team. He's 45 so. out there. Yeah, coming okay. Off. All right. Another play here. He goes okay. and gets underneath that. He does a good job. Really, he's a good kid. When he does well, I hear about it all week, so I try, yeah, to, be, hey. I try to limit the compliments. <laughs> He'll point them out to you? Yeah, yeah. You have to be careful with that sort of thing, yeah. don't you? No, I'm just kidding. No, um, he does. Not any more coachable. You see how he got underneath that? They ran the bubble and was trying to hit that slant under there, and, of course, Braden read it and got underneath it and stopped him from throwing it, and then okay. the DB over the top, uh, Wheeler and Udo did a good job. All right. Yeah, they scored one touchdown. Uh, Banging away, and they kept after it. Yeah, got one defensive man. I think that's Colt does a good job coming <clears throat> heel line there. You know, Colt Casey was a safety in the spring, wasn't he? His latest spring football. No, I, he was up until spring football. Yeah. We moved him to D line. He did a good job in the weight room, put some weight on. He's a tough kid. Yeah, smart kid. And uh, you son know, of a coach. Yeah, that's as right. A matter of fact, Kyle's over at Hog, but yeah, we, uh, you know we're hurting on the D line, so you know moved him down there, and he's really he's done a good job. Yeah, he was safety last year yeah. for us. There's your this is our This is our I lined up offside oh my as goodness. corner coach. And this is a 104-yard interception return by Cameron Price that was called back. Yep, yep. And we, uh, you know, corners work at every day where they line up and give the thumbs up to the official and let him tell them if they're on or off in a good, you know, in good position. and. You can't see on the film, but I don't think that top corner up there did it. And he's lined up off sides. Yeah, but Chris Perry of the Tidal Morning Telegraph told me that the um, the, the official didn't throw the pe the penalty flag until Cameron's about 20, the 20 yard line. Oh yeah. It took him a while to throw it. Yeah, he's probably digging for it. Well, you think he's <laughs> digging? <laughs> this would have been a, a school it. record though. Oh yeah, we heard about it from Price. <laughs> and a state record, man. I don't know. Probably <laughs> no, not. But he, uh, it'd been good. Oh, he did 104 good job. yards though. Yeah, he, he's got to learn. Like we told him though, you you know that's taking a big chance running out of the end zone uh -huh. against Rockwall. He'd be dead right there on the one. Uh -huh. We'd be starting on the one. So you got to know when you got clearance and when you don't. Sure was fun to call, though. Yeah, it For was a fun. moment, I thought that was going to be a... Yeah, it was fun just to watch him have to run 104 <laughs> yards. <laughs> I'm not sure I could run 104 <laughs> yards. It'd be tough. That is that is too cool. That was a great play, but uh, uh, the interception stood, just you'd, not, the, uh, not the touchdown. No, I guess the interception didn't stand, no, it did it? No, I'm they sorry. They got another chance, and we lined up offsides on the next play. The, okay, that's right. The guy yeah, we sent in for the guy that lined yeah, up offsides. Yeah, if it was offsides, the pick wouldn't count, would <laughs> Yeah, it? I guess it's coaching. <laughs> <laughs> See if Will and them watch this show. <laughs> if they do, you'll hear about it, right? <laughs> yeah, they did. Okay, they did score on this possession. Yeah, okay. they did. All right. Now we'll see some more of the defense. It's a good job everybody fitting right there. Samples in on that. And yeah, we just got sloppy that one drive. They were calling our cadence out. You know, I think we had about three illegal procedures in a row. They finally called it on them. Once they figured out they were calling out our snap count, and our old line kept jumping. 
Then we got them on a freeze play here. And yeah, this is a touchdown. Ajwan does a good job. Really, their DB did a good job of covering us on that. But it helps when the receiver is 6'3". And can jump and, and can, can catch. Jump. Yeah. That's like a rebound. He's a heck of a basketball yeah, player. That's, that's right. basically a rebound that's for it. him. That's it. He well, went up and got it. Only the ball's not round. Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, Ajwan had two, inter two touchdown catches Friday night, or Thursday night. Yeah, he does a good job. Him and Devers both. No, he had one. I'm sorry. He had one touchdown catch. But that was a really nice one. Back on defense here. You know, we're going to see that freeze play a bunch this week. I think Rockwell did it to us about five times last year where they freeze you, and if you jump off sides, you got a free play. They throw the fade route. Bad news, I think they completed about three of them last year. Well, and it's up to the cornerbacks not to quit on the play just because, yeah, that's right. you know, it looks that's like right. the play's that's why everybody over. does it, right. yeah. As long as they don't make contact, then it's a live play. Defense doing a good job there. See a lot of defense here. Here we go again. Trying to throw a screen pass. Guy's not letting them yep. do it. Quarterback sack. I think that was Wheeler off the edge. Did he get the pass off? I guess he did. Did he not? Yeah, they, they, they okay, called he got the pass. It wasn't a sack. He got the pass off. Yeah. Your guys got him. You know, but you look and some of the, you don't see it now, but going to the next play, but the defensive line recognized screen. Joshua Ross does a good job of that. He'll retrace his steps once he recognizes it. Playing the run well there. That's a good job. Bradley coming heel line, linebackers fitting. Nose guard not giving up a lot of movement. I don't know which nose is in there. Tavares watching him. Uh, boy plays that double team pretty well. Tight angle view of a defensive play here. Inside run. Nope. That was Watson right there, matter of fact. Fighting off the block and making a play. He doesn't always get the glory. I mean, no, he doesn't make a lot of, get to make a lot of tackles, but uh, that may be the last one there. Or you got to hit play. Yeah, and you got, you know, you're, you're there in you a situation. Go. There you go. That, uh, they don't get a lot of glory, but they, you know, need to draw a double team and, and force the issue and use up some of those linemen to free the linebackers up. It's a good play here. That's one where Watson didn't come to balance there. I think that was Watson, yeah, Traveris. But the other guys, Calhoun, I think, and those guys came in and made the play. Fake punt here. I think it's fourth and six. You almost knew this was coming, too, didn't you? Yeah, they didn't have anything to lose, you know, and that's what we kept waiting on, some trick stuff. Guys didn't back off and now back on defense. And again, you're up 28-7. Yeah, Zach makes a good read and decent run. What does Rockwall do? Well, run the ball well and tackle well. They, uh, you know, they'll they got all their lot like Auburn. They'll have that sniffer back. Sometimes they have a double sniffer. What's a sniffer? Uh, back? They have a little fullback, you know, mm -hmm. sitting right behind the line of scrimmage. They rotate uh, eleven that defensive end. Mm -hmm. And uh, 34, another big defensive lineman, they roll those guys in at that sniffer. Uh, this, by the way, is Matthew Hawk yeah, kicking it deep. Okay. Yeah, he did a good job on that one. Of course, we're offsides. But they'll uh, they'll use the fullback some. Yeah, that's right? pretty much what he is. Uh, that sniffer is a fullback. He's just cheated up real close. Will he carry the ball or just block? No, he's more of a blocker. They, uh, they're physical football. They, I mean, they're undefeated. They're, I mean, is that what they do best? Or are they just a really physical football Yeah, they, well, they just sound everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. really, that's like I say, they – Defensively, they're big up front, and their linebackers are really good. Secondary does a good job. Uh, they tackle well. They don't give up the big play a bunch. So they make you drive it down the football field. And then offensively, they'll, they'll pound you and pound you, and then they'll big play you, warn a break a run, Castillo will get loose, or you'll be so concentrate so hard on those two that uh, one or three will get loose, and they'll throw mm -hmm. a big ball to them. So they're just sound in all phases, do a good job in the kicking game. You know, they got two kickers, two punters. Uh, so you'll have to be aware of everything. 
remember the game. I think it was was it against them last year. They scored the touchdown right before halftime. Was that the you Rock brought Bowl the game? old ESPN play up? Yeah, didn't you? that made ESPN. Yeah, but yeah. the point is, you were competing well with them. That game was a close game. Yeah, it last ended up forty three thirty three. Yeah, uh, but you sound like my kid Dylan. His in there this morning going. I was watching Rockwall <laughs> highlights from last year, and he's telling me about it. I go, hey. That was a ESPN play. You but don't want to bring that up. Weird play right before halftime that kind of turned the tide. Those are the kind of things that's you right. can't afford. That's right. Well, you know, the touchdowns, you got to make them earn everything. That's don't right. You? you know, but the difference to our kids this year is they'll keep battling. You yeah. know, last year I could tell at halftime that that just demoralized us and our heads were down and didn't know if we could get them back up. But right. this group, they're just going to keep fighting for four quarters. But like you say, you need to make them earn it. And when we're down there, we need to score. We're just on a pick right before that play, trying to yeah. go up two scores and. Uh, I think that ended up putting them up by one uh, one point going into halftime. Yeah, I remember that game last year. You led in that game early last mm -hmm. year. Yeah, yeah. Bryce had did a good job. His speed, you know, and that's one thing we're going to have to use, use our speed on the edges against right. them because uh, they're pretty solid inside the box. Uh, but, you know, Zach have to throw the ball well. Receivers have to be physical on the outside getting open because they do a good job bumping and running with you on defense. So it's going to take a great game, but, you know, we're excited. We're ready to see one. Yeah, I mean, you can make the playoffs without this win, but you need help, and that's the whole point. You win this game this week, and you don't need any help. That's you right. the you whole take, thing in control. Take right? care of it yourself, and that's, you know, that's our objective. And like I say, it's going to take a – just a great game against a great team, but you know those those happen every week in some level of football. Specifically, I mean, what what has to happen Friday night to win this football game? We got to tackle well. Is I mean, it that simple? It, it's pretty simple. We got to execute offensively because you know they're going to get us some. They do such a good job defensively and they're so physical, but we got to score every possession. But defensively, we have got to tackle. They're going to break some tackles. I mean, really, that three guys may be there and they may not run over all three of them. They're so big and physical. The Warren kid is, and Castillo's just that great athlete. So. We're going to have to tackle, and then, like I say on, earlier on defense, I can't rely on my buddy. Hey, he's in position; he's going to make the play. I got to get my tail over and help him because there's a chance they're going to break that first tackle. And uh, uh, no slow starts this week either. No, right? gotta, I mean, go that's been it. a problem this year, and you've won some of those games, yeah. but you can't afford that. This Not week, against a you? solid team like this. You got to go from start to finish. Um, the uh, uh, you got these last two games. You got this home game and then the game against Damon Forrest on a Thursday night to wrap up the season. I know just talking to your seniors because I talk to them for our radio pregame show mm -hmm. every week, and I know how much they burned to go out of here with a playoff, be yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah, they have. I tell you, they've stuck in there through some hard times and and just continued to work hard and and get after it. And really, it'd be nothing more satisfying from a coach is to get those see those right. guys reap those rewards and get to go and play in McLean Stadium, but. They still got that opportunity, and it's there for the taking. They just got to go take it. You know that team two years ago uh, was you know, your first year. You you played a lot of sophomores because you didn't have anything to lose at that point, right? Well, now Dermot and Matlock and some of those guys yeah, are seniors. They're all seniors. They've been through the ringer now. That's this, right. You know they they want something out of them. Yeah, that's they? good. That's good. They need to get it. So Friday night's their opportunity. It is their opportunity. So you look at this ball game. I mean, can you really? I mean, is this? A game, can you afford to get in a shootout with these guys? I mean, as long as you beat them by one, but well, I mean, is it going to be that kind of ball game? You know, I don't know. I think it looks like on the outside, you know, that it could be a high-scoring affair just because right. they're so good and hard to bring down. Uh, you know, like I say, they're scoring, averaging about 50 a game uh, through district. Uh, you know, but on the inside, you know, hey, it, it may turn into one of those defensive battles. Uh, you just got to be ready for whatever. I hope it uh, – Whichever way it goes, offensive, defensive battle, that we're on top at the end. Yeah, and play good special teams yeah, too. Cover right. the kicks. Yeah, right. all three phases got to be on, you know. And our defense, our our special teams, uh, covering the kicks has been pretty good as of late. Uh, it was good to see Hawk get that one over their head the other night. We tried kicking it deep, and he was able to get it over the head. We just lined up off sides. We can't make those dumb mistakes like that. Be a great opportunity for the Red Raiders against the uh, Rockwell Yellow Jackets coming up Friday night. It's homecoming this week at Robert E. Lee, and it's a 7.30 kickoff and an opportunity to uh, pull off the big upset against Rockwall and win this home game and uh, then set themselves up to be in the playoffs. The Red Raiders and the Rockwall Yellow Jackets, 7.30 Friday night, Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. See you there for Coach Piskey. I'm Bill Coates. Thanks for joining us.